John, what I'd like to do is just classify some of these doomsday mechanisms, uh, a taxonomy, if you will, of doomsday. Let's start with the obvious ones. Category one is what we do to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Nuclear war, uh, germ warfare, things that are talked about. Category two, things that are obvious that can be done to us. A volcano that erupts that, that obliterates the sun and uh, uh, all life uh, uh, cannot be sustained. A supernova that irradiate the earth. Uh, errant uh, uh, comets or uh, meteors that hit the earth. But you've taken to step three and four as categories that uh, we can do to ourselves or can happen that uh, nobody has really thought about before or in very limited ways. So what are some of these? Well, I think you're complimenting me a little too much when you say that notice is sort of these things. But I have listed them and thought very seriously about them. Uh, one of them is that genetic engineering could get out of control. Uh, particularly, I've been worried by reports that some people have been working on contraceptive viruses which will make animals or even human beings infertile. In the case of human beings, it's been suggested that the infertility would be useful during short periods. But if these uh, bacteria or whatever are out there in the world, there's the danger that the entire human race would be made infertile, which I think would be a disaster. There are problems with computers. Some people think it would be an excellent thing if computers replaced human mm -hmm. beings because they would be more intelligent and happier and so on. But uh, I've and quite a large number of other philosophers are worried that the computers might simply simulate consciousness instead of being conscious in the way in which we are, they wouldn't have worthwhile consciousness. So it would be a disaster if, we were, if the human race were replaced by a race of ordinary computers. I've also looked at the worries sometimes expressed in the physics journals about a disaster caused by getting to very high energies in accelerators. Accelerators are the preferred ways of getting to high energies which physicists need to investigate in order to, to develop their theories of physics. And the danger is that the space in which we live is unstable, that it could be pricked by a collision inside some particle physicist's new shiny accelerator which uh, would destroy first the Earth, then the galaxy, then on beyond, through an initially tiny, tiny bubble forming and then spreading disastrously. Uh, it's not just me thinking about this. I'd never have dreamed of it myself. It's the physicists who come up with this idea. Well, to that happy list of uh, doomsday mechanisms, we would be remiss if we didn't add a final category, which is a theological one. A number of uh, religions and religious groups would hypothesize an end of the world, and each one seems to have their own particular uh, orientation to it. Uh, but uh, in our array, in our taxonomy of ways the human race can end and thus in, an, in a way fulfill the doomsday argument, we would put a theological bucket as well in our taxonomy. I think you could for two reasons. One, some people are so convinced that the world is going to come to an end soon, no matter what we do, that they feel that it's quite okay to pollute the environment to bits because the environment only has to last the next 50 years or whatever. Other people are feeling that uh, doomsday should be helped along for religious reasons and that uh, strange sect which uh, developed in Japan and put uh, poison into the subway system was uh, working on destroying humanity for apparently religious reasons. Well, the, the uh, sad point about today's world is that there are a number of uh, uh, sects within 
almost every major religion, which one way or another favors uh, a doomsday scenario because it leads them to their um, uh, imagination of what the world to come should be. So I don't think it's limited to any one religion. In fact, I would say it's a characteristic of virtually every religion that some small part of it seeks that doomsday thinks that the afterlife will be better than this life, so we may as well hurry on the process. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, there are a lot of philosophers who, without being religious, have stressed so much the miseries of life that they would seem forced to the conclusion that Schopenhauer reached, which is that the earth would better have remained like the moon, a lifeless mass. Schopenhauer didn't commit suicide because he thought he'd be reincarnate, reincarnated at once if he did. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that happy note, I think we will uh, conclude this section. <laughs>